I was actually born in Bogalusa, but my father uh, was from Franklinton, uh, had been raised on a farm about two and a half miles south of Franklinton on the Enon Highway. His father was a deputy sheriff who was killed, and there's a monument in the courthouse square uh, with reference to them right now that's been here all those years. Uh, he was 15 years old at the time. He was the oldest boy and was pretty well responsible for the family. So he was going to LSU, but he, they, uh, he got a job at the paper mill in Bogalusa when he was 18 years old and went there. And 48 years later, he, uh, he retired from there. But long story short, he, uh, he met my mother there, who was at the old Elizabeth Sullivan Nursing School. They married, uh, lived there until I was about three years old. And then he purchased a farm that was about a mile and a half below their old place on the Enon Highway, and that's where I was raised. So I went to uh, school in Franklinton, uh, graduated from high school there, then went to, uh, to LSU, not really uh, sure of what I was going to do. I thought maybe at one time I was going to be an engineer until I took my first algebra course, and then uh, I decided there might be a better profession for me. I don't know really uh, what got me interested uh, uh, in the law. I had taken what we call, uh, they called at the time, expression when I was in uh, when I was in high school and actually in grammar school. We had a had a lady who taught that. that uh, I was pretty good at uh, reciting poems and memorizing them mainly, and so in any event, I decided that that I, that might be the way I wanted to go, so I went into, uh, I got my undergraduate degree in political science and was really fascinated with it, and uh, from there went to law school. Yeah, I remember I took, uh, I took constitutional law, the government constitutional law under uh, Dr. Steamer, and I really enjoyed that. And then we had a professor, uh, named Vogelin. He used to say that he, he was, uh, he, he didn't know how he got to LSU, but he definitely was bigger than that. <laughs> and he, he ended up, I think, going back to Germany later on, but he was really a great professor. And uh, he, sort of, he sort of molded my interest at that time. I was on the Law Review, and I guess Professor George Pugh probably had as much influence on me as anybody because you were in an informal setting with him most of the time and dealt with him personally. In fact, he even took a bunch of us. He, he took the editorial board down to uh, Miami uh, one year for a, for a conference there, so we were pretty close to George. I started out uh, as a law clerk for Judge Robert D. Jones in Bogalusa. He was at that time on the First Circuit Court of Appeals. Uh, he had been a district judge for Years I don't know I don't know the number of years that he actually served, but he served by himself for a long time, serving Washington and St. Tammany Parish, 22nd Judicial District, and uh, then uh, uh, one judgeship was added, and I think Jim Warren Richardson then was the judge on that, and then uh, Judge Jones went to the uh, went to the First Circuit. I started for him in May of 1961. I bought a house in Bogalusa, uh, was living there. In August of 1961, Judge Jones had a heart attack and died. About a week later, the paper mill went on strike for the last <laughs> time that I think it, it had. Pretty well shut Bogalusa down. Uh, so I was, I was sitting there. Uh, with my job gone and the mill struck <laughs> and uh, really wondering what I was going to do. And that's when I, uh, Franz Watts in Franklinton contacted me. And 
he had been a sole practitioner in Franklinton for years and years and years. And so I decided to go, uh, to go with him, and I did. And after the first year, we formed the firm Watson Crane. For a guy who practiced by himself, had, a, had really a very practice. He, did, he let it, did a lot of insurance defense work. Uh, as most law firms did at the time, you also picked up a few personal injury cases along the way when you didn't have a conflict with the insurance company you were representing. Uh, he represented Washington Bank, uh, which gave me some uh, some experience in doing some uh, some legal work for a bank. Uh, he also represented the town of Franklinton, uh, so I ended up doing most of the the work for the town because that entailed uh, going to council meetings at night. And Franz was past the time when he wanted to do that, so I did most of that. He also represented the Washington St. Tammany Electric Cooperative. And uh, so I, I got familiar with that aspect of the law with the business end of it and did, did a, really a lot of work with them. Lyle Killingsworth at the time was the, uh, was the manager, and he and I became close friends. And, I even took a few trips to seminars and stuff to to learn some of that. So I had a varied practice, uh, and really and really enjoyed it. Franklin at the time did not have a hospital. You just had doctors who uh, who had their offices, and Dr. McGee had what you would consider to be a clinic, I guess, but it was not a hospital. But the Riverside uh, they established the Riverside Medical Center. There was a uh, of course, it, it uh, involved taxes, and there were, strangely enough, a lot of people who were, who were opposed uh, to that hospital from a tax standpoint. And I think that there were connections to other, other doctors and other hospitals and other areas that, that caused it. But anyway, a suit was filed over that. And, uh, I think that was my first argument in the Court of Appeals. Uh, we won the case on the district court level, and uh, then it was appealed to the Court of Appeals, and, uh, and we ended up winning it there. But it resulted in Franklinton having a hospital, which they still have. I stayed with him until 1966. Uh, when Welton Seal in Bogalusa talked me into uh, coming back to Bogalusa, and we formed the firm of Seal, Lee, and Crane with Welton Seal, myself, and Donna Lee. Uh, and we had Don Fendelson as an associate at the time. We represented the uh, the Bogalusa School Board and, and all of the integration litigation was going on at the time. And we also represented uh, the city in those things. And, and I ended up doing them. When I, when I was in law school, I thought I would never have any use for constitutional law. And I ended up practicing more constitutional law than I did anything else because I was the one who, uh, who basically handled uh, the legal aspect of that. Met some people there who were important to me later on. Uh, we were on opposite sides, but the Young brothers, A.Z. Young and R.T. Young, who were, who were the leaders of the black community at that time, uh, met them and uh, really became friends with them, and they helped me uh, when I ran for office later. Unfortunately, Judge Jim Richardson died, and that opening came up. Judge Edwards had just been elected, and I was friends of his, uh, and he held the other seat. Uh, so when that opportunity presented itself, I thought, well, it might be better to wait later, but I better take it while I can. And at that time, we had a situation, I guess that was set up by Judge Bob Jones. He always uh, was about 10 steps ahead of everybody else politically. but. Uh, at that time, 
the 22nd Judicial District, which has always consisted of Washington and St. Tammany parishes. But one of the judges had to reside. We had two judges. One had to reside in Washington Parish and be elected from there, although you ran also in St. Tammany. Uh, and the other one had to live in St. Tammany Parish and, and ran in both parishes, Washington and St. Tammany. That was changed uh, when the 1974 Constitution was adopted. They took that out, so there's no residency requirement now. And when you'd been a, an active practitioner like I was and then, then uh, moving immediately to the bench, you, you, you had a period that you had to uh, to adjust and know that you had a different mindset. But I, I didn't find the transition that difficult. Uh, we had a lot of work and we didn't have time to think too much about it. But I, and I guess one of the best things that I did the first year that, uh, that I was on the bench, after I'd been on the bench probably for about a year, they had started the uh, state trial judges school in Reno, Nevada. And I think they started in Reno because of the, uh, the Kellogg Foundation, I think, had given a grant. And so they, they established it at the school there. That was one of the requirements. And I went out there. That, that was a, at that time, it was a four-week uh, session of school. And they, they had judges from all over the country who came in and taught the courses and uh, taught you the practicalities of what you, what you had to do. And I, thought, I think that, that, really, that really assisted me. Uh, although I had been trying cases before then, but it, it gave me an insight into some of the thinking that, that, that went on and what the, judici the judiciary needed to do. We handled everything. We handled uh, juvenile cases. We handled domestic cases. We handled all the criminal cases, all the civil cases, anything that came in, uh, you know, anything that required district court uh, uh, work. We did. Tried. Uh, I tried the uh, Robert Lee Willie case, which has some familiarity, I think, because there were a couple of books written about that after it was uh, after it was finished. Uh, Sister Prejean, I think, wrote a book with reference to him after he was uh, incarcerated. That case was interesting. One of the most interesting cases I tried, I think, was uh, Robert Burnett for the armed robbery and attempted murder of uh, Pat O'Brien, who, of course, owned the Pat O'Briens in New Orleans, but lived uh, had a home in uh, St. Tammany Parish. Uh, that case. <laughs> That case ended up with me uh, getting struck by a huge ashtray when he uh, didn't like a, de uh, a decision that I had made. And uh, at that time, people uh, smoked during recesses, and you had those big old square ashtrays that sat on the bench, and he managed to, to come over the... Uh, uh, the bar and uh, with that in his hand and threw that thing at me like a missile <laughs> at my head, but I managed to get my head to the side and it caught me on the shoulder. But uh, that was interesting. Well, I had him removed from the courtroom first. Then I, I took the next step when his lawyer requested it. I had him bound and gagged and brought back into the courtroom. And eventually we removed, uh, we removed the gag, but, uh, but we kept him bound the whole time. Of course, it's a whole lot different on the district bench than it is on the Court of Appeals. Actually, you don't, you don't have any, any real ability to, uh, to settle a case in the Court of Appeals. But uh, I always found on the district bench that the pretrial conferences which we used to a large extent. I don't, I don't know how much they'd been used prior to the time that uh, that I came on the bench and Judge Edwards was on the bench and, and uh, 
and later on, but the pretrial conferences with the pretrial order. Uh, and, and I never did mind giving my assessment of the case if the lawyers wanted it, it just from the evidence that I had in front of me, uh, if that would ha help them uh, reach a settlement. Of course, it was always understood that, that uh, my assessment could certainly change once I heard all the evidence. But I, I, I thought it was fair to them to give it if they asked for it. Now, some people didn't want an assessment and I didn't give it to them. But if they wanted me to assess their case, I did. And I think that encouraged settlements. When I retired from the bench in 1994, at the end of 1994, uh, of course, I was taking assignments during 1995, and then uh, uh, when Governor Foster took office in 1996, you probably recall that uh, gaming was probably the most controversial issue we had in Louisiana at that time, and he set up a new regulatory system uh, where he took away control of gaming uh, from three different entities, state police and uh, the land-based facility, which was separately regulated, and uh, video poker, which was regulated by state police. He combined all of the regulation under one board, and uh, there was a one permanent job involved in that, or full-time job involved in that, and that was chairman, and, and he appointed me as chairman of that. And I did that for the eight years that he was in office. Extremely interesting, extremely different from what I had been doing. I did that for those eight years full time and then taking assignments after that. So I'm still working. I'm extremely proud that I've got a family that has not really given me any trouble <laughs> and seems to be doing well. So I'm thankful for that and proud of that.